Now I can go straight in with the buildings. The paint is dry and I'm going to use flat brushes to make the building shapes because being buildings, they've all got crisp edges and it will mean I can put them in quickly, but also it gives them a lovely edge, lovely shape. And I'm using a mixture of my Prussian blue, my alizarin crimson and my aureolin to make them. Do you see how it made a nice grey? Coming from the left, not too much detail. And here where I've got the two towers that are slightly redder, I'm bringing in another flat brush and I'll pick up some of the alizarin crimson and a little bit of this cadmium red to make a brown and a bit of my aureolin. Colour mixing is so important. Spend time in your palette. Don't rush to your painting because you've only got one brush stroke to get the right colour in. And if you go wrong, you've wasted the whole painting. So spend the time in the palette. There's no harm in spending ages in the palette. And I can bring in some of the features of the buildings now into the wet wash. Don't worry about accuracy, just the feeling of these buildings in the background. Don't worry even about accuracy to colour. You're only concerned with tone, the dark tones against the light. These little, uh, what would you call them, domes I suppose they are. Go back with my base. Uh, my base, my Prussian base, I suppose is what I'm using, uh, of my building. I'm coming, all, I'm coming from the left to right, but I'm basically heading to my main feature, which is Canary Wharf. So often it's a good idea not to do your main feature right at the beginning, because it gives you a chance to see if you've got your colour mixtures right, you've got your um, uh, density. Uh, but sometimes it pays to go straight in. There are no rules for order in a painting, even though generally you work from light to dark uh, in watercolour. You do what you need when you need it. Now the colour of Canary Wharf is this lighter colour, which is where I'm going to bring in this aureolin. To me it seems the grey is lighter, it's a softer, Oh, it's almost pinky. You'll find that as you choose your blues and yellows, you will also, as you choose a yellow, think it looks pinker. As you use a blue, you'll think it looks yellower because your eye is always working relatively. So you're, as soon as you make a decision, oh, it's a bluey grey, you will find, oh, I think it's a pinky grey. But just go with your instinct. In one way, it doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you don't end up with a roundy building like that. Look, we just need to get that straight down that side. got a dark side to it which I'm probably bringing as a wash after. And using these three different size flat brushes, I've got this one is a 12 millimeter or half inch if you're still imperial. And look how it can bring in that lamppost just like that thin line on the end of the brush. and it gives me the possibility of going both ways with the brush. I can bring out little details on the roofs. They're just, they're wonderful brushes, flat brushes. And then we go for the 19 millimetre, which is three quarter inch. And I'm getting a bit more colour into this wash for this building in front. And it's got steps down the side. So I'll just increase the width, come out the side there. bit of darker, while well, I've got this darker wash on here, I can come and find these darker, darker shapes in the foreground, darker shape across here. And the nice thing is if you can try and get it in while it's not too dry, I want a smaller brush for that. Oh, this is a six millimeter, this tiny little thing here, but ideal for these more narrow shapes. 
come down the side of Canary Wharf. So we don't need very much information at all to create the feeling that these buildings are actually far more complex than we're painting them. We're just looking at the main tones, simplify into main tones. And now the side of the painting, or, or concentrate on the middle of your painting. The size of your painting can be carried by a strong middle. Don't waste your time or your energy in the side of a painting. Certainly give it attention, but the strength of a painting is carried in the middle, and if the middle of your painting works, then you can carry the side anyway. Cadmium red mixed into Prussian blue makes a good oh, black, if you really want to go dark, but it'll make a good brown for us, a good dark color at the side where these red brick buildings are also cast into shadow. And again, we don't need too much detail. My bus disappeared. That actually, I know, is a lorry in the photograph, but that doesn't mean I have to paint a lorry. When I was sitting there, it was the buses I was interested in. So don't get carried away with accuracy to your photographs. You are the creator. You're the painter. Use the photograph to your advantage. Don't be dictated to by it. So I'm going to reintroduce my red bus here because it vanished into the uh, wet wash. Sometimes you'll find that your paint looks darker than in fact it's going to dry. Some of these dark colours, for example here, that's a pool of paint, and it will, dark, it will dry lighter than you see it. So note that when you're doing it so you don't end up with too light a, an overall picture in the end having, and wishing that you'd actually done it darker in the first place because the first wash is generally always the freshest. Now because we want the bridge itself to be crisp edged against the background, I'm going to come in with the background first, let it dry and build the bridge on top of it. So we'll use the big brush because we're going at the back there and we can't really see much below this bridge. This dark red of the bridge is, is strong colour, so I'm going to paint its shadow under the bridge. When I mean the shadow, I'm not talking about the shadow cast by it, I'm talking about the ridge just under the bridge, in other words, the bottom of the red. And there's also a bit of a shadow cast by the, I suppose it was sort of the eave of the red, I don't know if that's the right word, and also by the uh, top of the bridge. So I'm using the flat brush also to put that in now. This brush is basically painting everything that is dark in tone so that I can then drop darker tone into it. I'm trying to go quite quickly so that I will still have a wet wash to drop colour into. I want it to be soft in the shadows and I can use a little brush to drop that darker tone. Pick up a little bit of alizarin, a bit of... I think we're going back to the mauve, aren't we? Yeah, we're going back to the mauve. Oh, it's already dry in there. Let's come from this side where it's still wet. There's another bridge behind that's casting nice uh, dark shadows against the further distance, but we can't really see that, so we're not, we're not overly worried, we're not trying to build the structure of London, we're not trying to recreate even this view, we're trying to make a painting of this view, inspired by this view I should say really. And it's dry there, so coming in slightly less and I'm going to dampen that out. Don't want to re-wet under the bridge because I don't want that to be too wet. And below Canary Wharf, what can I see below Canary Wharf? A little bit of that yellow that's in the tower coming down so that she comes into the... It's actually the bridge behind when you start to see it, but you don't see that with your eye. Don't, just because you can suddenly see it all now because you've got time to look at the photograph, remember what you saw when you were out there, when you were inspired and took that photograph, did those sketches. But all I saw was lights against dark. We can use the big brush again for the shadow under the bridge. It's sort of a broken into two thin bands. I wonder why, it's interesting. The supports are, are a greeny colour, but we don't want them to be too green. So making that green quite muddy by mixing the three colours. We can use that here at the side and these boats at the side which don't need much attention. Don't give them too much time, don't give them too much mind. And now we come back to the bridge itself. Now, it isn't too bright a red, and it's only got, at the minute, the wash of the Prussian blue over it. So let's see how red this can go and not be too red. We can actually let it go over some of the background. Now, there's some nice little tiny 
central things in the middle of the bridge which are light. So it's quite nice to leave those out of it. So where's the centre of the bridge? There. And the nice thing about not going too strong on something like this is that if you want to darken it up, you can do, but it, you may find that you need that lift of light in the landscape. But what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is just drop in a little bit of darkness in parts so it's not too pinky. It's quite a, quite a red red. In fact, I'm going to put the tiniest tip of cadmium red in just to take it off the pink, because to me it just feels a little bit pink, but I want to keep that lift of colour. There, that's better, isn't it? That darks down the opacity of the cadmium red. Yeah, that's better. And then let's bring in the green of these pillars. Again, we can hardly see it, so we're just uh, putting green, we're putting a bit of aureole in with the Prussian blue, and we'll see how green it comes out to start with. Probably too green, so that we'll put the wash on, and then I can add into it a bit of gunge, <laughs> a bit of darkness. Remember when we saw the composition, it was much, it was blueness. We don't want to get too complicated. Just because we can see it in the photograph does not mean that we saw it in real life. A bit more into the, the bridge pattern there. All the while you're looking tonally, so half close your eyes. That's how you see tone. And now we just need something down the side of that tower. Something between these two towers here. And then we want something on the water to bring the feeling of this. Let's see. Now, we'll start from this side. So in case we get it uh, too dark, probably don't need it that dark. This is where these flat brushes are lovely because you can just bring them along. I've taken a bit off the water because this side of the water is lighter. A little bit. In fact, we don't even need it to come over there. We've got enough on this side. Let's use the smaller brush just to catch the flicks of water. And then we want the plain leaves in the foreground. So we're going to use our flat brush again for that. And we need a greener colour, but we don't want it to go too different from the rest of the painting. Again, the aureolin and the Prussian blue. And I think first of all, we just do, we do this in three tones of green. So we've got the feeling of these leaves flicking. So a, a mid-green, they were fluttering in the breeze. So we've got to get that feeling of flutter. Don't want to spend too long, you don't want them to be too definite, they were moving all the while. And now I'm making a nice dark green, nice dark green, because these are right in the foreground. Aureolin, Prussian blue and the alizarin crimson. And then we find these darks on these leaves. And using the brush basically as, as freely as you can, twisting it and turning it. This is the the bigger of the brushes, this is the 19 mil or three quarter inch. So you see how versatile it is and we can actually even make the stems as well with this. A little bit more bluey green. And we've also got the lovely seeds, which we will have to, I think, do with a round brush so we don't make them too square. And I'm going to do them in aureolin for the uh, light and we want to position them so they drop somewhere here I think and then they're dark 
darkness of their, their, their shaded side just dropped in because they're really dark against light, aren't they? So we just drop the shaded side in from the left. And I can just bring a little couple of dabs for this little police launch as it's coming towards me down the river. And I think there we have the finished picture. The main thing to remember when you paint a scene like this is to keep it simple. You've got the reference, you've got the sketches. You can always paint another one. Keep it simple. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. Today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.